Welcome back to the Calibrate Tools and DIY channel. Have you ever used a paint roller without a tray? Well, today we're gonna learn about the Graco Pressure Roller Kit. No tray needed. But before that, we're gonna get a refresher on how to prepare your paint sprayer for painting. Stick around and I'll see you right after this. Now, the first thing you wanna do is learn where all of the controls are. Now, the first control is the power switch, and that's this right here. Then you have the pressure control knob, that's this here. Then you have the prime, and that's this here. But you also have a prime button on this side, and that's this, and we'll get to that later. Now on the spray gun itself, you have this red piece here, and this is called the spray tip guard. And this is very important because it protects the surface that you're painting from getting damaged by the spray gun. Because if the spray gun gets too close to the surface, the power of the jet coming out of the spray gun can damage the surface that you're painting. And it also protects you from getting injured in the same way. Because they have this thing called skin injection, where if you're too close to the spray tip yourself, the jet can penetrate your skin and cause damage that way. Now this piece right here on top of the spray gun is very important because if you notice it's shaped like an arrow and it's pointing that way. If it's pointing away from you, that means the gun is ready for spraying. But if you turn it 180 degrees and it's facing you, that means the gun is ready to be unclogged. Now this component right here is called the trigger lock and right now it's not engaged so you can engage the trigger. But if you turn it where this piece right here is pointing towards you, the trigger is locked. Unlocked. So now that we know where all of the controls are, let's get into the setup. So the first thing we want to do is connect the hose to the sprayer itself. So we have to remove this red cap here first. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, when you're tightening this with the wrench, you don't want to tighten it too much. It doesn't take that much to tighten it with the wrench, and you don't want to damage this portion, because if you do, you're out of a sprayer. So the next thing you want to do is turn the pressure control knob all the way to its lowest setting. So you just take the knob and turn it this way. And the way you know it's at its lowest setting is you turn it all the way to the left, and this yellow-orange line here gets smaller and smaller until it stops. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is make sure that the power switch is turned off. So let's do that. And we want to plug the unit into a secure wall outlet. So the next thing you want to do is separate the drain tube, which is the smaller tube, from the larger tube, which is the suction tube. And they're held together by these tension clamps. So all you have to do is pull them apart gently. And there you have it. So once you have your drain tube separated, you want to place it in a designated waste pail, and that's the one I have on the left. And you want to submerge the suction tube in a pail full of water if you're dealing with water-based paints or latex paints. If you have oil-based paints, you want to submerge it in a pail full of mineral spirits. So since we're dealing with latex paints or water-based paints, we'll put it in water. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is lift the prime spray valve to the prime position, and that position is up, like that. Then the prime button we talked about earlier, we want to press that twice to loosen the inlet valve ball. So let's go ahead and press that twice. Then we want to turn the pressure control knob to the start position. We do that by turning it to the right, all the way to the start position. 
And you know that when it lines up with this right here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the power switch on and allow fluid to come up the suction tube out of that pail and out of the drain tube into this pail for about 30 to 60 seconds and then turn it off. So let's go ahead and do that. So the next thing we want to do is we want to submerge the suction tube into a can of paint and turn the unit on and see if the paint drains into the pail right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So the next step is to rotate the arrow to the unclogged position. And remember, we do that by rotating it 180 degrees like that. Then we're going to disengage the trigger lock. Then we're going to point the gun into the waste pail while pulling the trigger. We're going to lower the prime valve and turn the unit on. So when paint comes out of the gun like you just saw, you want to release the trigger engage the trigger lock. Then you want to take the drain tube and submerge it in the paint pail and attach it to the suction tube again with the tension clamp. Okay, so before we talk about the roller kit and how to attach it, let's talk about the kit itself, how it's configured and all of that, okay? It comes with a 40 inch extension pole which allows you to extend even further when you're rolling. You just attach it to the roller kit here, like that. And there you have that. This right here is called the roller clip. And if you pull this down, like that, the roller is able to be removed from the frame. Just pull it off like that. Now, this is the frame. And if you see those holes here along this tube, that's where the paint is expelled into the roller itself and allows you to paint. So the paint comes up through here, out of these holes here, and into the roller. On the end of the roller here are two caps. So if I pull one of the caps, I get this right here. Now this right here is the diffuser. And it consists of two pieces. It comes apart like this. This is the other piece, and this is the end caps that hold them together. And if you look inside the roller cap, the tube, you can see those holes inside the tube all the way down, right? That's how the paint gets into the roller, through those holes right there. So let's go ahead and put it back together. Let's take our end caps, put one here like that, and the other here like this. Take the other piece of the diffuser, put it back on like that, 
and let's put it back inside the roller itself. Now we can go ahead and take this end, put it back onto the frame, slide up our clip, and we're ready to go. So the roller kit also comes with a 45 degree swivel that you attach to your gun, okay? This allows for more dexterity of movement, for more ergonomic handling of the roller in case you need to go up and down without having to twist your wrist around as much, okay? So we're gonna attach this to the gun, but first we need to take off this spray attachment here. Now you don't need to attach the 45 degree swivel if you don't want to, you can just attach the roller straight onto the gun here like this. Probably easier to do it this way. This is without the 45 degree attachment. With the 45 degree swivel, you have a wider range of motion when it comes to your wrist. I'm gonna take my Calibrate Multimax pocket tool here and just tighten that up a little bit. Wouldn't hurt to do that. By the way, guys, if you want one of these, go to Calibrate.com and grab yourself one. Okay. So now we're gonna disengage the trigger lock and start rolling.
All right, guys, when you're cleaning your roller kit up, you want to do it just like I showed you earlier in the video. You want to slide the clip down, pull the roller off. You can go ahead and place the frame with the holes in the paint water. Make sure the holes are submerged in the paint water like that. All right. Then you can pull out the diffuser. Place the roller cap in the water, press water, then place the diffuser, take it apart and place it in the water as well. Okay. It's good to have a brush or something to scrub some of the caked up paint off of the parts. And to clean your pump out, your machine, and all your hoses, check out the video on how to use pump armor and you'll be good to go. All right guys, if you learn anything, don't be afraid to hit that like and subscribe button. If you got some advice, please leave it in the comments. And don't forget to go to Calibrate.com, check out some great products we have for you guys. And don't forget to sign up for the email list to get some great content as well. Hey guys, thank you and I'll see you next time.